Are you like Brad, spending loads of time getting exposure for your videos, using tools like histograms? You're looking for something easier, consistent, and most importantly, faster. Well, you're in the right place because today we're gonna look at the best exposure tool that also happens to be all three of those things, false color. Now, if you're using a mirrorless camera, in order to use this tool, you're probably gonna need one of these an external monitor. But wait, I know what you're thinking. You're not gonna do that. You don't wanna spend money on a monitor like me. I'm expensive and then you have to carry me around. I get it. But it's okay if you really don't wanna use an external monitor, even though I'm one of the best camera purchases you can make, then you could turn your phone into one with an app called Monitor Plus. But if you are interested in a monitor, stay to the end and I'll tell you which one of these is my favorite and the extra exposure tool it has that works similarly to false color and can make getting exposure even easier. So what is false color? False color is a feature that maps different colors to specific exposure levels using a color scheme different from reality to make everything stand out. This isn't real. These specific exposure levels are measured in units called IRE, and generally the scale goes from 0 to 100, with 0 being completely underexposed black and 100 a very overexposed white. Now, depending on which monitor you're using, the color schemes will vary by a lot. I'm Animos, and I'm a fifth generation ninja. It even says it right here. I'm small HD, and good things do come in small packages. The best part about false colors, you can see all the individual exposure levels in your scene at the exact same time, making exposing pretty easy. So how do we do it? Well, the most important rule when it comes to setting exposure is to prioritize whatever is the most important thing in your frame. And for many people, that's people. So let's take a look at exposing skin tones. For a standard picture profile, generally speaking, a good rule of thumb for skin like mine is to keep the IRE levels between 60 and 75 in normal lighting, with many TV shows and movies hovering in that 60 to 65 range. For other skin tones, let's take a look. This is a color checker and here are six common skin tones. Mine is the closest to the second one. If I turn on the false color and change exposure until this one's around 65, it gives us the corresponding colors for the other skin tones. So when exposing a scene for skin tones, all we do is either adjust camera settings or lighting, like I'm doing right now, until we get the right exposure color on the brightest part of our face. For the shadow side, that's okay to be darker, and you can adjust how dark it is with some fill lighting. Generally speaking, the darker it is, the more dramatic it is, so it depends how much drama you like. After that, ideally we want to avoid any completely underexposed or overexposed areas in our image, and then it's up to you to be creative. Well, that was easy, but what about log? So glad you asked. If you're shooting in anything other than a standard picture profile, like log, these colors won't work. Take a look at this same scene in log. If we expose to 65 IRE like before, or green with small HD and gray with the Atomos, it looks like this. But log isn't meant to be a finished image and is instead a flat looking image that preserves more detail and dynamic range. It's meant to be corrected back to a normal looking image in editing, often using a LUT. So when we apply a LUT to this footage, it doesn't look great. Now it's overexposed. But that's okay because with these monitors, you can load your LUT and then get exposure like before without doing any adjustments. Just drag that .cube LUT file onto your storage and then upload it to your monitor. If we take a look at the false color of the same image with the LUT and without, it's super different. But now with the LUT, we can actually tell that we've been overexposed the whole time. Big takeaway, with log, always use your LUT to set your exposure. So now that we've seen two monitors in action, to me, one of these color schemes is much clearer and easier to read exposure levels quickly. And looking at it now, maybe you feel the same way. And for that reason, it's my favorite monitor. It's the small HD. Yes! Yes! He's not even a ninja. Hey, Atomos, get lost. But as promised, in addition, there's a newer tool on these small HD monitors that's similar to false color, but geared specifically for skin tones. To activate it, set exposure levels to L zone, and it only works with log profiles, so you'll have to make sure you set that as well. L zone bases everything off the midpoint between black and white or middle gray, showing you everything in stops of light below and above with different colors. It is limited, however, to six stops below and above middle gray, so if you have a camera with a lot of dynamic range, more than 12 stops, which is pretty common nowadays, you wouldn't use this to show what's completely under or overexposed. Instead, let's focus on those skin tones. Going back to the color checker, if we set the gray card to match the middle gray color on L zone, it reveals the corresponding colors for the six skin tones. Again, mine is here, about one or two stops above middle gray. What's great about knowing your skin's relation to middle gray is you can quickly make changes. Let's say I'm outside and the brightest part of my face is pink, which is five stops over middle gray. And for this example, three stops over where I wanna be. My camera's aperture is set to f4, and according to this chart, three stops darker is f11. All we do is change it and then it's done. It even works with adjusting lights. Let's isolate my key light. 
Right now it's set at 4%, and for this example, that's one step under what I want. Now, every step of light means light output is doubled, so to increase this light one step, I'll have to double it from 4% to 8%. And that's it. Using L-Zone in combination with false color to check for those under and over exposed areas should get you pretty great exposure pretty fast. And if you want to have another exposure tool in that bag of tricks, check out this video here. I can help with that though, right? Yeah, fine. You can help with that. Me too, right? Yeah, you can also help with that. Everybody can help with that. Monitors, am I right?